Typical of Lamb has taken the game world by storm. With its durable art style, as well as a combination of roguelike and management sims type gameplay, there's something in it for everyone. We're kind of in between content for the game right now, while the devs work on content patches. So today I'm going to show a few games that I feel share at least some of the aspects that game has. And make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Starting with this video, I'm planning on making weekly videos showing Switch owners games that you definitely need to pick up, big or small, and it's definitely appreciated. First, we have Binding of Isaac. Binding of Isaac is really the game that kicked off the revival of the Chocolate Tile game to the mainstream. And if I recall correctly, it might actually be one of the first indie games to really take off too. Binding of Isaac is about a young boy named Isaac who is trying to escape his mother after a voice from above tells her to sacrifice him. Pretty normal, right? Isaac escapes and ends up in this weird cave-like area, and that's where the game takes place. Cold Lamb takes a dark religious theme, it makes it cute, even when you're sacrificing and just slaughtering people. Binding of Isaac, on the other hand, yeah. The dungeons in this game are laid out pretty similar to that in Cold of Lamb, but like I said, it's more intense. If you die, you lose all your progress, and every time you go through a dungeon, it's randomized. So for example, first time I played, I went left once and I had to fight this giant boss that just destroyed me. Next time I came in, I went the same way again, and I was just three enemies there waiting for me that I took care of easily. In my opinion, this game is pretty hard. When I was trying to record footage for this video, I just kept dying over and over and over. It's like I'm a boss magnet or something. And at the end, I was just crying like Isaac. Anyways, I'm sure many of you will welcome that challenge. In terms of the art style, they managed to merge like a really cute sprite style game with grotesque blood imagery. Sound like some other game we know? While they are similar in that regard, Binding of Isaac takes it to a whole new extreme. The art in that game is super grotesque. Dialed up to 1000. If you can't have that kind of thing, you might not want to play the game, honestly. But if you're okay with it, definitely play this game. Next, we have Hades, another important roguelike game. If Binding of Isaac is what kicked off the revival of roguelike games, Hades is definitely the apex of that, winning multiple Game of the Year awards, and they're all well deserved, in my opinion. Hades follows Zagoras, prince of the underworld and son of Hades, as he tries to leave the underworld and reach Olympus with the help of his fellow gods. If you love the smooth combat of Colt and Lamb, you will love the gameplay of Hades. In this game, you have multiple weapons to choose from with skills given by the gods that you can add to them and give you just the boost you need to vanquish any foe. You have the option to fight up close with attack and slash or attack from far projectiles. With every death, you are encouraged to try a different play style, whether that's through your choice of weapon or the skill that goes along with it. This game has an insane amount of replayability as well. Just because you beat a boss the first time, don't expect a challenge to be the same the next time. Bosses in this game learn from their defeat and are ready for your return. Of all the games on this list, I think this is definitely the game that was top of the list in terms of how it felt to play. Like with Binding of Isaac, you lose all of your progress every time you die. With each time through though, I felt like I was getting better and better. My skills were improving as I learned how to use each ability and each weapon. Another thing that stands out about this game is the dialogue, especially if you're a fan of Greek mythology. Almost every line is coming to gold in my opinion, and it'll put a smile on your face. In between his words and his delivery, Zagreus is the perfect main character. He really captures the feel of a sulky teenager. While it doesn't have a super cutesy art style like Cold Lamb, designs for guts all stand out and deserve recognition. I know what you're thinking, Sapplox, you should have games that have similar combat to Cold Lamb, but about the management sim part of the game. Well, I got you covered. Our next game is Giver Keeper. Giver Keeper follows a man who after getting hit by a car, wakes up in a strange medieval world and is tasked with becoming Giver Keeper. He must now complete multiple tasks and progress with the game calls to the technology tree in order to find a way back home to his lover. This game is essentially Stardew Valley, but it takes place on a graveyard in Sable Farm. Your job is to maintain and build up the graveyard. Bodies will be dropped off to you, and surprisingly enough, you can take the bodies out back and harvest them for meat that you can sell for money. Isn't it strange that Cold Lamb and our first three games are so focused on death? Should I be concerned? Nah, you know, I honestly hesitate to put this game on the list because of the theme, but then I remember Cold Lamb is about satanic cults and sacrifices. Man, a cute art style really does make you overlook some crazy stuff, right? While combat does exist in this game, it's not as big a focus as with the previous games. The game is also more of a slow burn compared to something like Cold Lamb, so keep that in mind. For me personally, this is the hardest game for me to get into of all the games on the list, but it definitely takes a very unique twist on the farming sim formula and is a very good game. The game is similar to Stardew Valley in terms of gameplay to an extent and the pixel art style. But this game gives off a completely different feel. This game can be creepy at times, which I'm sure is just up some people's alley. Next, we have one of my favorite games on the list, Moonlighter. I promise, this one isn't about death. Okay, well, it kinda is, but that's not the focus. Now, this is a very interesting game. Moonlighter is about a young man named Will, owner of the shop Moonlighter, situated in a ravaged village. In this game, you explore dungeons and work to revitalize the village. What makes this game unique is that during the day, you run your shop, where you can set the prices based on supply and demand, and at night, you scour dungeons looking for items to sell in your shop. The money you raise is used to either rebuild the town or upgrade your shopping weapons. In my opinion, the dungeons in this game are just as punching as the ones in Binding of Isaac, and the gameplay loop is very addicting to the point where you'll be telling yourself, just one more day, I just gotta play one more day. All the resource management systems are different, this game is probably the closest on the list to Cold Lamb. Next on our list is the forever beloved Stardew Valley. While it may not be the first, Stardew Valley is a definitive farming sim game. You play as a farmer who leaves a soul-crushing job in the city, live a peaceful life running a farm in the rural Stardew Valley. 
This game takes the gameplay loop popularized by the Harvest Moon Story of Seasons games and perfects it. You can tend to your farm, grow crops, fish, mine, and even fight monsters if you so choose. Heck, you can even get married to one of the many available candidates and start a family. This game even has a co-op mode that lets you do all these things with your friends. You want to marry your friend? You can do that. Graphically, the game is stunning with a pixel art style that reminds you of old school games, but honestly, blows them away. For those that buy Stardew Valley on PC, you also have the option to mod your game. This allows you to make complete changes to your game and tailor the experience to your liking. Every character in this game is colorful with an interesting story, and you'll find yourself wanting to befriend all of them to learn their stories. This game isn't afraid to touch on more dope subjects as well. This game is the epitome of relaxing and cozy vibes. If you want something that you can unwind with and not worry about getting attacked or your minions are rebelling against you, this is the perfect game. If there is one game on this list that you must play, let it be this one. This next game took the world by storm a few years ago. It may not be one you were expecting on this list, or maybe you were. I'm crossing New Horizons. I know what you're thinking, Sublox, this game is the exact opposite of Cold Lamb. There's no combat, it's just good vibes. While it's true that New Horizons doesn't have Satan Colts unless Isabel has a double life when we aren't playing, that would explain why I couldn't find some of my villagers. Anyways, while the games look completely different on the outside, if you love the management sim options in Cold Lamb, you'll absolutely love them in New Horizons. What makes this game unique from the other games on the list is that this game is seriously just about relaxing. Just living your life on a small island. You can go fishing, catch bugs, hunt for fossils, hang out with friends, or just spend the day shopping if you want. The key feature in this game that makes it really stand out is the ability to create your own designs. This means that you can create your own clothing options, whether it's from real life or from a TV show. I've personally been hooked since the GameCube game. When I play Animal Crossing, I get hooked for months straight. I just can't put it down. I buy the latest clothes, stuff for my house, and even participate in the game's stock market. A pro to this game being in real time is that you are in no rush to do anything. You have the entire month to do what you want, if not longer. You can also celebrate holidays with or without friends on the actual days of the events. With the advent of indie and casual games, we are truly in the golden age for both roguelike and management sims. Are there any games that weren't on this list but you felt should have been? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave a like, and check out my other videos. See you next week.